This video is going through section 9.1, which was all about variation. We had talked about direct variation at the beginning of the course, and now this section goes into inverse variation, which a quick way to describe it is the idea that as one variable goes up, so does the other, or as, one, or as the other one goes in the opposite direction, so as x goes up, y goes down, or as y goes up, x goes down. And then something called joint variation, which means basically a direct variation with multiple variables. So first thing we're going to look at is looking at different either equations or tables of values and figuring out what type of variation do we have. Is it direct? Is it inverse? Or is it neither? If it is direct or inverse, then we need to figure out what that constant of variation, which we refer to as the k value, is. So when we're looking at this, direct variation, you want to think about direct variation is always going to be in the form of y equals kx. Inverse variation is in the form y equals k over x. So the first one, uh, y equals 1 third x, that is an example of direct variation because you have just your k times x, and your k value is 1 third. The next one doesn't have y by itself, so we're going to get it by itself. If we divide by x, we have y equals 4 over x. When you have x in the denominator and y in the numerator, that is inverse variation, and your k value is 4. And the third one has neither, because with direct and inverse variation, you don't have anything being added or subtracted. So as soon as you see that addition sign, you know that it is neither. And since it is not a variation equation, there is no k value to worry about. With tables, the first thing you want to do with tables is you want to look and see if you can tell kind of the trend of what's going on. As x gets bigger, what's happening to y? Is it getting bigger or smaller? So the first thing I notice in this table is my x values are getting bigger, my y values are getting smaller. So at first glance, we're thinking that it's probably an inverse relationship. To prove it, to prove an inverse relationship, if we get take this equation and we get k by itself, inverse variation will always have the characteristic that if you multiply the columns, the x value and the y values, you should always get the same number, that k value. If that happens, it's inverse. So for the first one, if I multiply these together, 40 times a tenth, I get 4. 8 times 0.5, or 8 times a half, I get 4. 4 times 1, I get 4. 2 times 2, I get 4. So this is inverse variation, and my k value is 4. If I would start doing that and I got 4 and 4 and then I got 1 to be 6 or 7, then that's telling you that it doesn't show that inverse variation that you might have expected. For the second one, what I notice is if I look at the x column, the x's are getting bigger, the y's are also getting bigger. So I'm thinking that this has the best chance of being direct variation. To see if it's direct variation, if I go to this equation and I get k by itself, k should always equal y divided by x. So what that means is if you take the y coordinate and divide by the x coordinate, if you're constantly getting that same value, then it is direct variation, and that k value is the number we keep getting. So if I take y divided by x in the first one, I get 5. If I take 50 divided by 10, I get 5. If I take 60 divided by 12, I get 5. 87 and a half divided by 17.5, I get 5. So this is direct variation, and my k value is 5. So kind of all building on your basic equations that I have circled at the top. The next thing that you have to do in this section is be able to do basic variation models. And essentially what this means is it's not really a word problem, more that I tell you the, how the variables, variables relate, give you some information to find k, and then use that model. So the first one says that x and y vary inversely. So you can write y equals k over x, or you can even write x equals k over y. Plug in what you know. You know that x is 6 when y is 14. So 14 equals k over 6. Multiply 14 and 6 together. And you can definitely use your calculator for some of the computation. 14 times 6 is 84. So your k value is 84. So my variation model is y equals 84 over x. And then to finish the problem, it wants to know, well, what happens to y whenever x is 10? So y equals 84 over 10, which is 8.4. So the idea is we write our basic model, use a pair of information to find k, rewrite our model, now it's more specific, we know the k value, and then use that model. The next one says that it varies jointly. So when you see the word jointly, this means that my basic equation is z equals kxy. This time I have to have three pieces of information to find k. z is 10 x is 3, y is 2. So we get 6k equals 10, divide by 6. We get k to be 5 thirds, or if you want, you could write it as a decimal, 1.6 repeating. Now I want to know what x is when z is 30 and y is 3. So I have my equation here, z equals 5 thirds xy. I'm going to plug in 30 for z. And 
then 3 for y. Now, you definitely want to watch for something like this. A habit that students get into is they always put everything on the right side of the equation. Notice what they gave you. They gave you z. A lot of times, students expect that you're trying to find z. They gave you z, so make sure you put things in the right place. I can have this 3 and this 3 cancel, so I get 5x equals 30. So divide by 5, I get x to be 6. So again, same idea. Write your basic equation. Plug in what you know to find the k value. Rewrite your equation with the k that you figured out, and then use that to answer the final question. And the last thing that we did in this section was basically the exact same idea, but now we're actually putting a context to it. So having a word problem where you're relating different uh, variables within some sort of uh, word problem context. So this first one is a geometry problem. It says the volume of a figure varies jointly with the square of the radius of the base and of the height. So my basic equation would be V. I'm just going to use letters that make sense. So V for volume equals K, the square of the radius, so R squared, and the height. So there is my basic variation equation, k r squared h. They tell us um, v is 63.33, r is 2.4, and don't forget to square that, and h is 10.5. So here for the first time, I really have to grab my calculator so I can figure out my k value. So I want to take 2.4 squared and then multiply that by 10.5. So I get 60.48, so 63.33 equals k times 60.48. Divide both sides by that 60.48 to get my k value. So 63.33 divided by 60.48 gives me a k value of about 1.047. Now it wants to figure out a volume whenever we have a radius of 1.5 and a height of 12. So my model is 1.047 r squared h, and now I'm going to plug in what they gave me. So 1.47 times 1.5 squared times 12. Very quick way to do this on your calculator so you don't have to round is you can just take times 1.5 squared. Move this over so I can see my numbers times 12, giving me a volume of about 28.27. So my volume, and we're working in inches, so that would be cubic inches. So just taking that number, putting it down. If you have to go three decimal places, you would write 28.272. And then the last uh, word problem deals with temperature and pressure and volume of a gas, something that you might do in like a chemistry class. It says that the pressure of a gas varies inversely with its volume, so my equation would be P equals K over V. They tell us that the a hydrogen gas has a volume of 8.56 cubic liters, so I'm going to put that in for V, so V equals 8.56, and the pressure would be 1.5. To find my k value, I'm going to multiply 8.56 times 1.5 and get a k value of 12.84. So now my equation is P equals 12.84 over V. That is my equation that relates both P and K. And then find the volume if the pressure switches to 1.2. So if P is 1.2, we're going to find the volume. I'm going to multiply 1.2 times V, and then divide both sides by 1.2. So 12.84 divided by 1.2. gives me a volume of 10.7. And volume was being measured in cubic liters, so cubic liters. 
That is everything that we did in 9.1. Uh, basically, the idea is that you can identify what a variation equation is, which type it is, whether it's direct or inverse, and what the k value is. You can go through with kind of the non-word problems where you're just, maybe the boring problems where you're just plugging in x's and y's and trying to find k. And then finally, the word problems, which is when the problems become a little more uh, purposeful. You're actually seeing how this problem relates to a lot of times a science context or maybe a geometry context, and you can use that idea to answer whatever questions are being asked.